Skyjack's Log, New Horizon, March 29th. Entry 1. So here we are. By Celestia, I have to say that I've missed this almost three months on the ground. It's good to be back up here amongst the clouds again. You know, sometimes I almost wish that I was a Pegasus. Damn cloud walkers can come up here and feel all the wind blowing through the, their manes like any time they want. Still, as good as it would be, I wouldn't sacrifice this life for any of that. It's amazing that Captain Raven managed to get the Horizon airborne again so quickly. I thought she'd never see the skies again, after all the damage she'd suffered out of Shadow Ridge. Part of me still can't believe any of us made it out of that damn death trap alive. Wretch, who paid us to get up down there, was taking his life in his own hooves when he refused Raven's demands for a bigger payment. But no pony ever gets between the captain and her ship, that's for sure. Can't say I don't feel sorry for the old girl, though. The ship, I mean. I know how tough being stuck on the ground for so long is. The skyship is meant to soar, and a skyjack's meant to fly them. I don't think Raven would have put so much effort into grabbing this job if it weren't so she could get the fixed ship. Taking care of the crew is one thing, but taking care of a ship is another altogether. Funny thing, too. Whoever wants whatever's where we're going this time must be quite the eager one. I've never heard of some pony paying to fix a ship and offering to pay for the job all at once. I guess they don't know any other Skyjacks willing to go out that far. Or, that reputation of ours is finally starting to pay off. Regardless, I'm sure the Captain, Raven, got it all sorted out. Bet there's a reason she's not telling us squat, either. Not that she ever tells us more than our cut of the pay warrants, anyway. I suppose it's all going to be worth it in the end, though. If only to be up here again to watch the sunset beyond the clouds. We're somewhere over the South Celestial Sea, on route to Zebrica. I know it's pretty far away to just go for some contract, but the old girl definitely deserves to be taken out for a long haul. Besides, I don't think getting back into the sky was ever anything any of us were going to say no to. Not that we're not all a little bit weary after last time. Anyway, we should reach the Shattered Coasts after a few days, then the jungle. After that, it's just a matter of finding where to make port and finding out where this place Raven says we need to be is. I doubt it's going to be as easy as all that, with a jungle out there, though. Not to mention the locals. By Celestia. I swear the stripes would have both my hind hooves if I'd let them. All just to try and rid me of some bad spirits and all that tribal rubbish. Though, if they offered me some kind of immortality potion or the secret of some long-lost treasure, I'd probably take them up on it. I won't lie, bits have been coming in pretty slow while we've been all stuck on the ground. Not that it matters now. The pay for this one is the best we've snagged yet. Maybe I'll be able to retire once we're done. That is, if this job is not anything like Shadow Ridge. By Celestia, I really hope it ain't. In the warm heat of the late summer afternoon, the forest seemed to take a deep breath. The humidity hung over the wild trees like a great blanket, broken only as a gentle breeze swept through them, causing the wet leaves to shimmer and sparkle in the dull light. The endless sea of thick green canopy was broken only by a muddy path, its long surface marred by pools and puddles. There was not a sign of civilization in sight, the only evidence of any pony had invaded the pure heart of the isolated forest were the hoofprints left behind by four equine figures as they walked along. One was a buttered yellow pegasus with a long pink mane, another a prim white unicorn wrapped in a sparkling purple raincoat and boots, the third was a lavender olicorn with a darker purple mane and a baby dragon perched atop her back as she walked. To Fluttershy, Rarity, and Twilight and Spike, the trek into the darkness of the Yerifree Forest was nothing new, even if it was their first venture into the trees for some time. Yet, for that last pony that had accompanied them, 
the seemingly blind journey that revered forest was not so casual. Starlight, are you all right? came the slightly concerned voice of Twilight Sparkle. She looked back at her new student. Starlight Glimmer paused, her train of thought abruptly silenced by the sudden words of her mentor. She remained that way for a few long moments before finally opening her mouth to respond. Yeah, I'm doing fine. A sheepish laugh followed the lilac unicorn's words, and she glanced about the gloomy trees with equally nervous eyes. I just never imagined learning about the magic of friendship would mean coming so deep in the Everfree Forest, she added, doing her best not to sound too disrespectful. Soaring through the muddy road, the dense wall of thick vegetation felt like it was closing in on every side. Each moss-coated tree stood like silent sentinels amidst the ghostly mist that lingered about them. The vines hung down from the rustling canopy like grasping arms ready to snare unsuspecting ponies. Bats, drawn out by the coming evening, set quivers through fog with their rapid wing beats, and the sound of many small forest creatures rang out as invisible symphony of croaks and chatters. The whole forest seemed like one giant, hungry beast, its breath slow and paced with a systematically haunted any pony foolish enough to delve into its shadowy depths, a multitude of strange and inevitable weapons at its disposal. In truth, it was a somewhat foolish way of seeing things. Most ponies from Ponyville respected the forest, yes, but many of them had seemed lost. The absolute dread of its sinister reputation garnered through the rest of Equestria. Don't worry, Starlight. We'll be perfectly fine. We used to come this way all the time, and I know you're going to love Celestia Luna's old library. Twilight assured her student happily, clearly trying to hide her own excitement. There's books like Snowpony's read in a thousand years, she added eagerly, whispering directly into Starlight's ear like some kind of excited school filly. Despite everything, the idea that there was knowledge at their destination left untouched for countless centuries was a very appealing one, and from books held by the princess no less. Forgetting her fears was slightly easier with that promise in mind. Besides, she knew that both Twilight and her friends would never lead her anywhere dangerous. Twilight's quite right, darling. There's absolutely nothing to be afraid of in the castle, Rarity assured, looking up in an effort to stop herself from seeing the thick mud that marred her once shiny purple boots and jacket. We've certainly made quite a fool of ourselves the last time we allowed our fears to get to us, she added with a hint of embarrassment. Oh yes, how could I forget? Fluttershy squeaked in response, hiding her own slightful bashful look behind her long pink mane as she smiled nervously. If by that, you girls were talking about running around scaring the living daylights out of each other, then yes. Twilight laughed jokingly, sharing the giggle with her friends. Hey, I wasn't running around all frightened, Spike declared bluntly, leaning back onto Twilight's mane casually. Oh, sorry Spike. So you're saying you weren't afraid of Pinkie Pie and the Pipe Organ? Twilight asked Riley, a playful smile tugging at the corner of her lips. The dragon opened his mouth and raised a claw to protest, but failed to come back with anything more than a dry shudder. Then he gave a disgruntled huff as his brow furrowed. Wait, Pinkie and the what? Starlight asked in confusion the possibilities dragging away from her unsettled thoughts regarding the forest. It's a long story, Twilight responded with a light sigh, while Spike just crossed his forearms and slouched. Oh, Spike, you know sometimes it's okay to be scared, so long as you have a good friend to show that there's nothing to be afraid of. While I told the sulking dragon, both Rarity and Fluttershy nodded in agreement. I'll say that the next time, you have to look at a plate of quesadillas. The dragon snorted swiftly, forcing the alicorn to wince as he snickered. Okay, point taken. She sighed in defeat, doing her best to hide the subtle dread that had come over her during the mention of the cheesy food. But seriously, Spike, do you honestly believe that I'll ever let anything happen to my number one assistant? Twilight went on, 
Not so subtlety, trying to change the subject. Of course. Any pony who tried to hurt my little spiky wikey would have to go through me first. Rarity stated as she carefully trod around a particularly large puddle. Her kind declaration caught the dragon's attention as she did so, and he shifted to face her. Me too. I certainly know how scary things can be, but I'd never let anything happen to my friends, Fluttershy added. Her weak confidence reaching its peak for a moment as she looked back at Spike and smiled. Her brave confession was somewhat wasted on the dragon, as his smitten eyes remained locked upon Rarity. The white unicorns reassuming her graceful trot as the muddy puddle disappeared behind them. I probably should have brought a notepad for all this, Starlight admitted sheepishly, as she observed just how good a lesson she just witnessed. Don't worry, Starlight. You can learn just as much from experience as you can from words, Twilight assured her, ducking under a mossy vine that hung low to the road. Starlight was about to offer her own answer. Yet her words were forgotten as she watched the vine brush over Twilight's mane and sweep the oblivious spike right off her back. Calling out in surprise, the baby dragon fell right into a pile of mud with a wet splat. Oh my. Fluttershy gasped as both her and the others swiftly turned back to aid their fallen friend. Spike, are you alright? Twilight asked urgently, using her magic to help him up. I think so. That stupid vine came out of nowhere, he answered, brushing the thick mud off of his purple scales the best he could. Oh dear, allow me, Rarity said, magically producing a cloth from her jacket and wiping away more of the dirt. Once again, Spike was at a loss for words, more than happy for the assistance as he looked up at Rarity. Everybody else simply rolled their eyes. We should probably make sure this hits anybody else. Twilight said, as she magically overhated a vine up to the canopy. Quite so. It's a positively tacky thing. Rarity huffed as she finished helping Spike and set her magic to shifting more of the hanging vines. Behind them, Starlight's eyes once again wandered off into the gloom amidst the dense trees. She was able to shake the feeling that the whole forest was watching them. The whole place was unnatural and alive. She'd been all over to Questry in her time looking for ancient spells and tomes all about her now-forgotten quest for equality. Yet as flawed as that ambition had been, it had taught her a lot about the world. But she'd never seen a place quite like this. The whole forest radiated what felt just wrong. Um, Twilight, could you wait a minute? The sound of Fluttershy's meager voice was almost lost to her companions as the yellow pegasus called out. Even so, both Twilight and Rarity paused, a tangled mess of green vines magically levitating before them as they saw Fluttershy hover up the canopy cautiously. What is it? Twilight asked as the question was on a pony's face. Um, I don't think that's a vine. Fluttershy took the thing in her hooves and was clearly trying her best not to sound patronizing. As she did so, she pointed to the undergrowth on the road, sighed. And true to her close speculation, more of the strange vines lay among the wild fauna. Being the closest, Starlight was the first to take a look, and levitated some of the tattered green material to look at it closely. The stuff seemed to be made of a tightly woven mesh of small fibers that twisted and curled in the unicorn's telekinetic grep. Muddy water seeping out of it as if it were some kind of sponge. She's right. This isn't a vine, Starlight said simply looking back at the others. It's rope. At her student's observation, Twilight levitated the rest of the length down from the trees, until it was sprawling about the road like a coiled snake. After a few moments, the rope slackened and pulled taut, with a shudder of water droplets. What in Equestria is all this doing here? Twilight asked, pulling hard on the rope as both Rarity and Starlight began to pull too. Nevertheless, the thing wouldn't budge, instead making the whole canopy shake and rustle. It was almost as if they were pulling upon the forest itself, causing it to call out in pain as a series of loud creaks and groans sounded from above. Then, just as it sounded as if it may bring down the whole canopy, the rope finally snapped with a sharp flick, and one fell limply to the road, as the rest sprang back up into the trees like a frightened animal. Fluttershy, fly up there and move the branches out of the way, Twilight instructed 
shaking herself free of her strained attempts to pull down the rope. Reluctantly, Fluttershy hovered right up to the trees and tentatively brushed the tangled leaves aside. Then she froze with a gasp and shock. The lower every pony else was hard-pressed not to do the same. Even Spike, who had reclaimed his seat upon Twilight's back, if only to get a better view. Directly above them, a wooden carved surface was almost completely consumed by the trees, and upon its rotted face sat a once elegant written white word that read simply, New Horizon. Well, that's certainly something you don't see every day, Twilight observed bluntly as she looked up at her intellectually brilliant mind, identified as a wooden hull of some kind of ship. Every pony gathered around the bewildered princess, their eyes cast upward at the wooden shape as the parted leaves rustled about. The shadow of its mass was visible as a great dark scar amidst the canopy, leading far back into the depths of the forest. Furthermore, now that it was clear that the thing was up there, everyone began to notice more parts of the wreckage. Scraps of splintered wood laying hidden among the moist earth, and many more ropes hanging loosely. The moss had began to colonize their soggy fibers, making them appear like tangled vines. Some of the trees even bore scars of a ragged impact, and many more buckled and sagged under the weight of the wrecked bough. Uh, how do you suppose it got up there? asked Fluttershy, gently floating back to the road with a soft wing beats. It must be some kind of skyship. I read about them a few years ago. Originally, they were made by Earth ponies thousands of years ago so they could trade with Pegasi over long distances. Now that there is equestrian mail service, that's not all that common. Twilight gladly explained. Ah, oh, yes. I saw one in Canterlot a few years ago, too. Although that marvelous thing was renovated as part of a private collection, it certainly wasn't anything like this old thing. Rarity added, sounding only a little disgusted as she pointed a hoof at the particularly large hole in the ship's side. That's just it, though. Most ships that fly today are either vintage or... Twilight began as she paused and narrowed her eyes. Illegal. As the words left her muzzle, she became focused on every pony's attention, and was quick to elaborate. Princess Celestia told me about the Skyjack trade once. That's what the crew of ships like this were sometimes called. They were mostly thieves or mercenary ponies, but all that they usually do happened far away from Equestria, where the skies weren't too heavily regulated. And that probably explains how it ended up here, then, Starlight commented, earning a curious look from Twilight. The lilac unicorn uh, winched slightly, fearing she may have interrupted something. Yet when any pony failed to add anything, she tentatively went on. Well, you see, you did say the Everfree Forest skies weren't monitored by the Pegasi, so it could have slipped through, she elaborated. To think... Ruffians such as this coming so close to Ponyville. It's certainly unsettling, to say the least, Rarity observed bluntly, crossing her hooves over her chest and looking sharply away in disgust. It's downright creepy is what it is, Spike shivered. One thing's for sure. It shouldn't be here. Twilight sighed, followed the long shadow of the ship as it disappeared back into the trees. The alicorn turned away from the road, her horn beginning to glow as she peered into the gloom and took a few steps away from the road. Um, Twilight, where are you going? Spike asked nervously, tapping Twilight's head as she tried not to look at the scary-looking trees. Well, we can't just leave this here without investigating. If any pony's doing something illegal this close to Ponyville, or Canterlot for that matter, I need to know. Twilight answered, her tone becoming firm. Yeah. But I think crashing may put a stop to anything they were doing, Twilight. The dragon retorted, eyes darting up to the shattered hull of the ship. He does have a point, Twilight. We'll be late to meet the others if we dally, Rarity added, moving up beside her. The purple alicorn sighed. I just want to take a quick look. I won't be more than a minute. Her eagerly tone didn't make it difficult for any pony to guess that there was more than just an urge to investigate in her reasoning. There was more than a little excitement there, too, and it wasn't hard to assume that this was the first time the always open and willing to learn princess had seen something like this. She was almost like a giddy fool begging her parents to 
take them to some new toy store. The regal facades of it simply being uh, her royal duty to investigate waned every second she thought about what she might find. Finally, Rarity gave up a huff. Okay, but if I get kidnapped by angry sky pirates, I'm blaming you, Twilight, the alabaster mare said firmly. Even though the look on her face partially told every pony she'd have no problem dealing with such a situation should it arise. Twilight nodded appreciatively before moving forward towards the twisted depths of the dense undergrowth. Spike clinged low to her back, trying his best not to look terrified as he was forced to dodge yet more hanging vines and branches. Fluttershy, are you coming, dear? Rarity asked, turning back to her Pegasus friend. Fluttershy's eyes were stuck in a circle of darting up to the ship and back to the forest about her as she stood like a yellow statue in the middle of the muddy road. Only when the sight of Rarity whiffing her hoof to get her attention did she finally respond. You want to go off the road? In the middle of the Erefi Forest? She asked timidly, not quite as concerned about hiding her fears as Spike was. Only for a short time, dear. Besides, you can always wait here if you'd like. The unicorn offered a reassuring smile before moving off after twilight, taking great care not to get her attire any dirtier than it already was. In that moment, Starlight and Twilight had both looked at one another with weary eyes, before the former spoke. I'm going to go take a look. And like Twilight said, it's not every day you get to see a ship like this. Starlight rationalized, unable to cover up the fact that despite everything, her own curiosity was blossoming. Fluttershy gulped but nodded as the pink mare disappeared into the gloom along with the others. She took another look up at the hull, then back in the darkness, then back up. The timid cycle continued for all of five seconds before the ship gave an almighty creak and shifted almost amidst the canopy. With a sharp eep of alarm, Fluttershy jumped into the air and sped off towards Starlight's tail before it could vanish into the shadows. On second thought, I think I'll stay with you, she said with a nervous shudder daring to glance back at the slowly vanishing road. Starlight just offered a friendly smile and nodded as both of them pushed forward towards the biting vegetation. Nevertheless, the shadows grew when the thick fortis closed in around them. Starlight couldn't blame Fluttershy for her caution. An illegal skyship not seen by ponies in Equestria for decades, crashing in the middle of one of the most dangerous places in Equestria, it certainly was not a situation any pony found themselves in every day. That was made all the worse by the muddy surface growing thicker under hoof. A mass of tangled roots, rotting logs, and fallen leaves, the only thing to break up the constant squelching. Puddles of water shimmered in the magical glow of Twilight's horn as both she and Rarity paused every few steps ahead. Before them, the trees hung low creating a small tunnel under the ship as the huge pieces of shattered wood tilled downward towards the ground. Both Starlight and Fluttershy stopped beside the others, looking ahead to where the part of the ship had become lodged in the trees appeared to have been snapped in two. Sharp spikes of splintered woods jutted out at every angle, as if the whole thing had been a brutally twisted apart. Most lumps of torn rubble lay scattered among the trees like wicked decorations, half submerged in the tangled floor of the forest, as the other piece had begun to slowly eat away at the invading object. The tattered fabrics of what it must have been the giant balloon hung down like a dirty, wet rag. Its surface was a sick patchwork of stains, rips, and moss, and covering the way ahead like a soggy curtain. Shifting the waterlogged sheet aside with her magic, Twilight, Spike, Starlight, and Rarity were the first to keep through, Fluttershy following close behind as her eyes darted to the interior of the front half as it slouched in the mud. Beyond, the rear half of the ship slumped lazily. Wooded innards and shattered cargo splayed out all over the tangled forest floor. Barrels had been burst apart like watermelons, and large crates bled seeping trails of vibrant alchemical powder. The battered remnants of several rusted crates also sat amongst the shattered wreckage, as did glistening hints of gold and silver. At the point where the ship had split, each of its floors were visible as water dripped down along their broken remains. Darkness warmed within, the only break in its content's appearance 
the glint of metal as the magical glow passed by. It looked... It took a great effort not to think about the eerie gloom, nor the ravenous forest that was slowly trying to reclaim the land that had wrecked had stolen from it. Instead, the hole into the ship's shrouded interior was what captivated most attention, and Twilight was the first to move towards it. Well, they certainly won't be delivering this anywhere anytime soon, she observed, dabbing a pool of runny pink powder with her hoof. What gave it away? Spike stated, swiftly adding, Can we go now? This place really gives me the creeps. Just a minute, Spike. I want to see if there's anything else to say how this got here. Twilight responded as she peered into the rear half of the ship. I think it's pretty obvious that they crashed, Twilight. The dragon retorted. He's right, Twilight. Any pony who was on this old thing looked to be long gone. Rarity added, looking down at the mixing colors of the forest floor with distaste. I can't fathom why anyone would go to such effort to smuggle such things. Why, this is no more than colored dye. It's probably some kind of exotic arcane salt. It's sometimes used to make all sorts of horrible enchantments and spells. Twilight responded, then glanced at Starlight. The pink unicorn shied away slightly, reminded of what she herself had once been like. Yet she didn't seem that was Twilight's intention. Instead, it looked like her mentor was looking at another intellectual opinion on the matter. She's right. I've seen ponies using stuff like this to make all sorts of things. It's highly flammable, for one. In fact, an explosion might be the reason this thing ended up down here. Starlight explained, earing an appreciative smile from her mentor. I'm gonna go check back and see if I can find anything in the cabin's cap- Cabin's captain. Twilight swiftly continued, before trotting forward and down into the ship's rear half. Perhaps I'll wait here, darling. This place is dirty enough on the outside already. Rarity responded, then glanced up at Fluttershy as the Pegasus gave a smile of relief. Yeah, I'm gonna stay out here too. Spike added, jumping down from Twilight's back and running over the others. Twilight just rolled her eyes, then glanced over at Starlight. Starlight? The unicorn looked between her timid friends and her bold mentor, then she glanced into the depths of the ship and gulped. There was a great many things in her mind telling her not to go into the darkness. Then again, she just couldn't let Twilight go alone. Yeah, I'm coming. She admitted reluctantly, before tentatively trotting over to Twilight's side. Twilight nodded, before slowly making her way inside, the light of her horn chasing away the shadows like swarms of cockroaches. Starlight's own magic added the illumination as yet more rows of smashed up cargo passed away. The whole place looked like it had been thrown into a blender. Heavy-looking wooden boxes had been thrown about like simple toes. The metal frame of the whole ship had been pulled and twisted like hot taffy, and rusted tools were sporadically scattered across the floor. A small channel of water had been pooling against the ship's base, and yet more trickled down from the sagged holes in the roof. Yet there were some things that looked out of place even in the midst of the chaos. Sharp blades thrown into the wall as if by hooves or magic. Splatters of dried gray dust spread across the wall where they did so, as if the wood itself had been bleeding. There were more deep scars in the walls further down, as if it had been frantically torn away. Stranger still was the scorch marks, far too small to have come from an explosive force of magical powder. Stopping beside one particularly large stain, Twilight prodded a hoof at the blackened wood curiously. It doesn't make any sense. It's like they tried to burn their own ship or something. She stated in confusion. Looking at the opposite side of the room, Starlight noticed a strange cylindrical tube made from what appeared to be some sort of translucent crystal. It almost looked like a diamond. Yet, that idea was betrayed by the fact it had almost been shattered like no more than frail glass. Inside was yet more of the dried gray substance. It almost looked as if it, the stuff had once been alive only to wilt away like dust without sufficient water. Sunken within it were several shards of strange glassy black material. Cocking her head in confusion, Starlight looked to see two more identical cylinders on either side of the first and several more scattered about the place, all of them utterly shattered. She took a cautious step closer and then felt something shift under her hooves, 
Clenching her jaw and closing her eyes at the initial rush of surprise, she looked down and shifted her hoof. Amidst the glistening shards of crystal and mud, she could make out the broken form of some kind of rock. Its surface was cold blue, almost frosty looking and marked by a glowing rune that flickered weakly. Did you find anything? came the sudden voice of Twilight, making Starlight almost shoot to the ceiling in alarm. Catching her breath and collecting herself, the pink unicorn shook her head as she turned back to her mentor. No, just some weird jars, she responded, pointing a hoof at her peculiar discovery. Twilight moved over and tapped one of the crystalline objects gently, before peering down to the ore, strange dust fragments inside. Never seen anything like this before. I've heard of ponies that can manipulate crystal, but this is all the way back in the Crystal Empire. Twilight observed as she levitated out more of the jagged fragments. As for this stuff? Before she could elaborate further, her words were cut off as something shifted above. Both ponies jumped as the sound of something scattered along the length of the ship, shaking free dust and causing water to shiver. Both Twilight and Starlight looked at each other nervously before the former set down the black fragments and moved towards the set of stairs opposite the hole through which they'd enter. It was clear to Twilight that something was... she was reevaluating her decision to go further. Her own fear not too well hidden anymore. Yet after a few long moments of assuring herself that there was nothing she could ha not handle in here, not to mention no more scattering sounds from above, Twilight began to cautiously move upwards. Come on. Let's get to the cabin and then get out of here. This place is pretty creepy, she finally confessed, as she crept up the stairs. Glancing back to the relative safety behind them, Starlight reluctantly followed her mentor up the dusty stairs and into the ship's second floor. There they found rows of scattered beds, and yet more signs of carnage. The heavy furniture had been thrown around like leaves in a storm and even the main support pillars of the ship were bent and buckled like mere twigs. Hammocks were twisted and tables uplifted, food and drink still visible as rotting away in the waterlogged air. Strange, they must have been eating when this all happened, Twilight observed, as her lavender magic revealed the chaotic remnants. Even so, there was still absolutely no sign of any crew, or anybody else for that matter. Not even deer during either of them. Any bodies or bones. Then, whatever happened must have happened pretty fast, Starlight added, eyes passing along the rotting walls, only to make out several large scars upon them. They were almost like claw marks, yet bore a ferocity that betrayed their modest size. Many more of the marks didn't look like claws at all, but insisted some kind of lash or whip that flayed the wood like it was no more than soft hide. Neither of them took too long to think about the eerie scene, before Twilight slowly crept up another set of stairs. Starlight followed, and allowed the darkness to reclaim its former hold on the ship's silent interior. Yet one strange image was soon replaced by another, as both mares noticed the set of stairs fell almost overgrown. It was strange, to say the least, especially considering the fact that the forest had only just began to regrow over the wreckage on the outside. Stranger still, it didn't feel like any kind of normal vegetation. It was weak and gritty, crumbling like dust under the weight of their hooves. It covered the tight walls, making them look like they were encased by an ever-growing spiderweb of thin vines. A chill filled the moist air, sending a shiver down both their spines. They moved further upwards, and the more of the dark vines seemed to be growing, until they almost consumed the whole wall. Then the sight of twilight paused in the opening ahead, stole Starlight's attention. Creeping up to her mentor's side, she peered into the room. And at the sight, it wasn't hard to guess what had stopped Twilight in her tracks. Through the stained set of shattered glass windows on the rear of the room, a weak beam of sunlight illuminated the captain's chamber. A desk sat in the center, with a chair at its far side. So, too, did many more cabinets stands on either side of the room as well as desks and a small bed. A door on the wall beside the room seemed to lead out to the ship's now scattered decks, yet it was sealed by a great many locks. That was not what was so unsettling, however. 
What was strange was the fact that the room was almost completely covered in a thick layer of fine gray vines. So much so that the whole thing had fused together. Just like the crystal vi vases, the plant substance itself had become gray and wilted, crumbling into dust at even the smallest disturbance. What in Equestria happened here? Twilight asked finally, speaking the words in both ponies' minds. The alicorn moved over to the desk and around the chair behind it. Then she paused with a gasp and raised a hoof to her muzzle. Starlight was quick to join her, then she froze with a similarly choked manner as she saw what lay in the chair. A frail pony skeleton, its bone blanked and withered, was curled up as if they had died in great pain. Yet all that was almost indistinguishable from the now dead mass of vines that encased them, almost like the shriveled remains of a fly caught in a spider's web. This must be the captain, Twilight said weakly, recovering from her shock. They must have died in the crash or something. Starlight's eyes passed over what remained of the withered body, with both curiosity and cold dread. Death was nothing new to her or any pony. They just hated to talk about it. This felt different, however. There was far too much mystery behind what may have happened to result in a demise like this. What about the rest of the crew? Starlight murmured her eyes fixed on the long dead body. Twilight didn't respond. Instead, she used her magic to yank the desk drawers free of the withered substance that sat sealed upon there. Inside were several tattered notes, a scorched red journal, and folded parchment, almost untouched by the substance crawling over the walls. As expected, Twilight swiftly set to reading all she could. Then she glanced up at Starlight. So her name was Raven? Twilight said simply looking at the shriveled bones with a hint of sad respect before glancing back to the notes. Starlight took another glance around the room. The cold chill still hung in the otherwise humid summer air. Her wondering eyes were drawn to the small bed and dresser. A regal portrait of a jet-black pegasus mare with a shimmering coat sat just above them on the wall, mostly covered by the vines. Just like Twilight said, there was a small plaque identifying her name as Midnight Raven. That's weird. All the pages have been burned out of here. Twilight stated in confusion as she pulled out several more charred pages of parchment. All the records of where they were going, where they came from, their cargo, it's all gone. It must have been up to something if they didn't want anybody else to know about it. Starlight offered as her perplexed mentor worried. Fell looked over at the wall, but then something abruptly stole her attention. A scream. Both ponies' heads shot up, their ears standing at attention. It had come from outside, right where the others had been waiting, and it sounded unnervingly familiar. Without a second thought, the pair rushed out of the room and galloped back down the stairs as fast as their hooves could carry them. Water splashed under the sound of their escape, and broken boxes were shoved aside. The sound of a struggle emanated from ahead, audible over the sounds of the running mare's breath as both galloped out into the wreck strewn around the area outside the ship. Miss led to a halt in the mud. Goodness, Fluttershy, dear. I know you love your animals, but... Rarity stated, as both Twilight and Starlight came to a rushing stop. Rarity, what's wrong? We heard you scream, and then... Twilight gasped before her fear subsided slightly as the unicorn looked at her in surprise. Oh, good, you're back. Now we can finally get out of this dreadful place. She said quickly leaving her new, no room for argument as she began trotting back the direction of the road. Only then did Twilight and Starlight see what Rarity had been talking about. Fluttershy was sat on the ground, her four hooves wrapped around a large oval. It had a smooth surface, almost like a dragon scale, and shimmered like polished marble in the dull light. From within, there was a faint blue glow, like a light shining through a thick liquid that flickered and pulsed in a manner almost like a heartbeat. Oh, but Rarity, I can't leave it here all alone, Fluttershy protested, lifting the thing onto her back. Both Spike and Rarity looked at their friends skeptically before the former moved back onto Twilight's back, a motion for them to leave. The Fluttershy dearest, I know how much you love animals, but this... You have no idea what this is, or where it came from. Not to mention you found it in a place like this, Rarity said motioning to the gloomy wreckage around her. 
I can't judge it simply from where I found it. I don't judge any pony else because where they came from. The Pegasus responded, and Rarity sank back slightly. Wait, wait, wait. Twilight intervened. What is that, and where did you find it? She asked, looking at Fluttershy. I think it's an egg, and I found it back in there, just in the bushes. The Pegasus gladly responded, looking back at the thing with a smile. Now it was Fluttershy's turn to look skeptical, but at the look in her friend's eyes, she sighed. Fluttershy, no one knows animals better than you do, so if you think it's absolutely necessary, then I can't argue, she admitted. And Fluttershy nodded appreciatively. I'm sorry, Fluttershy. You're right, it's just... Rarity began to apologize sheepishly. Yet even now, it was clear her words were held back by doubts. I think what Rarity means is, you shouldn't go messing around with something unless you know what it is. Remember Philomena? While I'd added, in a effort to support both of her friends. Don't worry, Twilight. I know. I just don't want to leave a poor defenseless egg out here alone. There was no nest. I couldn't find any signs of others either. So it must have been abandoned. Fluttershy responded. And this time, no pony could find enough fault in her action to argue. Meanwhile, Starlight was trying hard not to think about what she'd just seen. And it wasn't hard to assume Twilight was blocking it out, too. They had both seen a pony in there, caught up in those vines. But maybe that was just part of the forest. The plants here did have a fearsome reputation, after all. Even so, the images of the bones and the idea the forest could have done such a thing was all the more reason to get out of there. The forest seemed to agree, as before any pony could speak again, there was a great rumble overhead. Once again, the world seemed to take a deep breath. Then a great gust of wind surged through the trees, as dark clouds began to materialize overhead. Come on. We're closer to the castle than Ponyville, and we still have to meet the others, Twilight said as she began leading the way out. You don't have to tell me twice added Spike as he pushed the low vines and ropes from his path. Good. I've had enough of this place to last a lifetime, Rarity added, happily turning her back on the rotting wreckage. There was another deep rumble of thunder, and a flash of distant lightning causing Fluttershy to jump slightly, before timidly moving after the others. Starlight took one last glance at the rotting wreckage of the skyship, the image of the skeleton encased in strange dead vines still fresh in her mind, as her eyes passed over its battered surface one more time. There was a fire, or some kind of explosion, a mutiny maybe, all perfectly viable reasons for why it had ended up here on the forest floor in multiple broken pieces. Starlight, are you all right? We should really get out of here before the storm comes, Fluttershy asked, looking back over her shoulder. Starlight looked up sharply and smiled nervously as she pushed the sinister thoughts right back into her head and mocked them away. All the while, she was trying not to look at the flickering sphere that sat upon Fluttershy's back. Each time it pulsed, that glow seemed to grow stronger, as if whatever was waiting inside shifted restlessly. Starlight? Fluttershy asked again. And finally, the unicorn shook her head. Yes, I'm coming. Certainly don't want to be stuck out here during a storm. She said quickly before trotting up beside Fluttershy, as the two trot back towards...